Hey guys and welcome to another feature video. Today I want to show you the JSON parser node and how to use it in your scenes. So first let's briefly look at the properties of our JSON parser node. The first property is the JSON expression where you can enter any JSON expression that you want to parse and the index that will define the index of an array that you have in your expression so that you can output any value in this array of your expression. In the outputs you can see the count property which will count simply the elements in your JSON array if you use any. So when we now enter an array in here in our JSON parser expression you can see that the count property will be increased to six since we have six elements in our array. So to use those elements, we can change our custom model down here on this button or just simply update the JSON parser node. So it will automatically look into the expression that we used and it will change the output properties according to the objects or the array in our JSON expression in here. So when we now step through the indexes, the values will change according to the elements in the array. The JSON parser node will recognize either simple values, an array of simple values, or single JSON objects, or an array of single uh, JSON objects. So for example, we can search for a text file that will hold a JSON expression. For example, this one, which holds simply some colors in an array. And the JSON parser node will now bind the expression to the text file output. And we must update our JSON parser node. So now we have an array of different values. When we look into the expression, we can see that this is uh, simply an array of four or five colors. They have a name, a red value, a green value, and a blue value. So we could, for example, bind the name property that our JSON parser node will output to a text node that we have here. So just bind it to the name and we can for example, bind uh, an RGBA to color node to our red, green, and blue values. So when we now step through the indexes of our JSON parser, you can see that the name and the color of our text will change accordingly. When you have a JSON object that holds another JSON object in it as a instance variable like this one here which has a name and a color which holds a JSON object with the color values, you will have to use a nested JSON parser. So again, we can add a JSON parser, bind the expression to our color property of our old JSON node and when we update the whole node it will output the color values in the end. So again we can bind it to our RGB2 color node and that's all about it. You can use uh, any other of the objects that you created or any other array and so on and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and now know how to use this parser node and I hope I will see you in our next videos. So until then bye!